Hi, my name's Tad. I work for a company called TFIX, and today I wanted to talk about China's lockdown effect on the global supply chain. So China's got a new zero COVID policy. What is it? Well, Shanghai has seen an Omicron breakout, and as a result, the city was locked down. It's the most significant breakout since the Wuhan. Lorry drivers even have special seals on their doors to ensure they stay inside their lorries and do not leave. If they break the seal, they simply cannot get back onto the motorway. According to China, the zero COVID policy is the only thing that's currently keeping the whole country from being engulfed by disease. But we know if, if that happens, the effect would be far worse for China's and the world's supply chains. Chinese vaccines such as Sinopharm and Sinovac have a much lower efficacy rate of barely 50%, which is the minimum what the country is required to just justify national vaccination programs. With such a low efficacy, China simply cannot rely on containment of the virus through a uh, containment of the virus spread through a vaccination programs. According to the 2020 census, the Chinese population of over 60s is 264 million, nearly 19% of the country's population. These people could potentially face life-ending risks if the virus spreads even more. China has a near universal healthcare system. However, it is not so strong that it could handle a countrywide pandemic spread. In addition, healthcare systems worldwide, including Chinese one, already face a shortage of personal protective equipment and staff. Xi Jinping is determined to show that Chinese government system's superiority that managing a pandemic in an autocracy is better than managing it in a democracy. But unfortunately, to prove it, he has to see it through which means a lot of pain for Chinese people and businesses within the country and also businesses worldwide. So during uh, the initial pandemic, China employed innovative, specialized and advanced systems to control uh, the spread of the virus. They used, um, that included um, using 5G technologies, extensive data analysis, cloud computing and artificial intelligence. These strategies, together with targeted uh, lockdowns, prove successful when tracking and containing the virus, which is what China is doing again with its zero COVID policy. So how does the lockdown in China affect global supply chain? We know that the global supply chain is so complex that the, the butterfly effects can be constantly seen rippling through a system. So let's investigate some of those effects. China locking down the internal transport system and the lack of labor at the ports means challenging times for global logistics, especially sea shipping. The ports are sort of operational. However, there is a shortage of workers to load and unload containers and no lorry drivers to transport goods and raw materials between the factories. And as China is the, is the world's factory, everyone around the world feels it when it stops. Around 60% of goods that are traded around the world come through shipping containers. With the alternative land transport through, for example, Russia being closed because of, of the sanctions resulting from the Ukraine war, the global supply chain faces a massive disruption in, in its logistics operations. Air cargo shipping, we know that it's mainly carried by passenger jets, could also be an option. However, it has not yet recovered from the pandemic, so it cannot handle the traffic required to ship goods from manufacturers to distributors worldwide. We know that hundreds of ships were queuing up at the port of Shanghai at the beginning of May 2022. This means that the empty containers are not getting inside the ports, they are not being loaded, and they are not being shipped to distributors. Due to high demand of product and increased logistics costs, even big retailers such as Amazon will have to 
raise prices, which will in turn will raise our cost of living. So what can we do? What can we do as product manufacturers to mitigate this China supply shortage and, and increased shipping costs? Well, whilst China is flexing its authoritarian political muscle to prove its governing system superiority over democracy in handling critical nationwide issues, we need to start thinking about alternatives. Nearshoring, or even homeshoring, could be one of the future strategies, which focuses on sourcing goods and services to produce products as close as possible to its final selling destination. The drawback, obviously, could be increased production costs. However, a more expensive product is still way better than no product at all. And the potential of relying on less on sea shipping could also be a worthy uh, result. We should also look into improving the circular economy of products. For example, the companies could explore maybe leasing options for their more expensive products rather than selling them directly to a customer. This strategy benefits the customer, obviously, as the seller is responsible for maintaining the product. The manufacturer benefits also from a steadier revenue stream and the ability to resell the same product to multiple customers. And obviously, let's not forget our ultimate product supplier, customer returns. It is a vast resource of products, yet usually need to be minimally touched up so that we can reintroduce them uh, into saleable inventory. We know that it can be a bit more complicated when selling electronic goods. Uh, however, third-party reverse logistics providers such as TFIX, which is the company I work for, can help you locally. 3PRL company can take care of liaising with customers to return a product, refurbish the product and either return it back to customer, send it back to the fulfillment center, recover some costs via secondary markets, or even recycle the product in a environmentally sound way. So let's put it all in a perspective. China's new zero uh, COVID policy put major cities under lockdown, disrupting the global supply chain. In addition, there are hundreds of stranded container ships due to lack of workers to unload them. And when the world's factory stops producing and shipping out the products, we feel the ripple effect across the globe. Not only the shortage of goods, but the price is also rising due to the rising cost of sea shipping. We can look into alternative markets to source the production of our products where the regime is more aligned with our understanding of democracy so that we are not so surprised by local uh, government decisions. Also, a strategy such as developing a circle economy and improving returned goods, re uh, returned goods recycling could also help us decrease the pressure on acquiring newly uh, manufactured products. That's it for today. Thank you.